Hey everyone, Sam Davidson here with MEA Worldwide and we are here at the premiere of Uppity, the Willie T. Ribs story here in Los Angeles, California. This is an amazing documentary directed by Adam Carolla himself. We're going to be talking to all of them and more, so stay tuned. So this film has been a long time in the making. I mean, when did you guys start this film? You know, we did a film called Winning the Racing Life of Paul Newman, which is when we learned about Willie's story because he really got his first start in America from Paul Newman, really helping him to get into Trans Am. And so once we learned about that story, we said, we got to make a doc on this guy. And we really started around 2016. We finished the film probably a year ago even, but it, it was... It ended up getting wrapped up in a TV contract, so we could we were waiting to release it, and now we, we just said we couldn't wait anymore, so now it goes on Netflix starting February 5th, which is tomorrow. Yeah, that's tomorrow. So what are you hoping that people learn from the doc that, you know, either if they didn't know him before or mm -hmm. if they did, what new information are they going to get? You know, I'm really hoping that people learn his story. I mean, w when we learned his story, both Adam Carolla, who's my partner, and I both said, how has nobody done this documentary already? You know, that, that's kind of how we know a, a story is a good story, is we go, why has nobody made this already? And for me, what I want people to, to know is, you know, he, he was the first black driver to race in the Indy 500 in 1991. It wasn't like, you know, 1940, it was 1991, you know, and now, since then, you know, the greatest driver in the world is Lewis Hamilton, who's the Formula One champion, which is amazing. And But there's still a lot of places in America where, you know, pe people just don't get a chance to... R racing has a serious barrier to entry, which is financial. So, you know, it's, it's very difficult to get in the sport no matter what. And I, I just want there to be ways for, you know, blacks, Latinos, people who can't necessarily afford to get into racing, if that's what they aspire to do, to have at least a chance to do it, yeah. you know? And, and, well, it's an well, absolute pleasure. My wife is about that tall, so I better have something. <laughs> <laughs> So when Nathan and Adam um, came to you with this idea, you know, several years ago, did you have any trepidations and what was your first response? My first response was, we got to tell the truth. That was it. You know, just, we're not going to uh, pull any punches on what happened. This is what happened. And if there's some people that uh, get butt hurt about it, uh, you, that's why you got a butt. <laughs> That's why you got a butt. What do you think people will be most surprised about when they see the film, learning new information that they will? Probably the opposition, the opposition that I dealt with and, and that I overcame. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, you've made such great strides in this industry for not just, you know, drivers, but, you know, but so many different people. So what do you hope that, like, people in this industry have taken from your story and how have you seen it play out in real life currently? Well, it's still, it's, you know, the response is still coming in from all over the world and uh, it's been real strong. It's, most have been in tears, most have been in tears and most have said, um, how did you, how did you keep going? How, why did, what made you not quit? I was going to make them quit before I quit, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That's how, that's in the DNA. I'm not going to quit. You're going to quit. And, and we did it. And so, I mean, it worked out well for you, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, it, it, it did. I would have liked to have had a few more opportunities to win the Indy 500. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it... it Timing is everything. My mother used to say, well, son, you came along 25 years too soon. Do you think you did, or do you think you came around at the right time to actually make some change? Well, you know, there hasn't really been a whole lot of change. That's the unfortunate part. The, the people know that what I've done. The sport worldwide knows what I've done. But... With the exception of Formula One, there's been no change. Formula One, they they are they are riding high worldwide because they've got they've got diversity in their sport, 
and they're, they're the best driver in the world is a black man named Lewis Hamilton, six-time world champion. So uh, Formula One, Bernie Ecclestone saw it. Bernie saw it. They're still uh, uh, dragging their feet here, and the sponsors in the sport, corporate advertisers in auto racing, they have a duty to do. They got a job to do, and they need to get it handled. Uh, so when you were doing the Paul Newman documentary, which was amazing, by the way, oh, at you. what moment did you decide or what did you learn about Willie that you needed to do one on him? Um, you know, we, we knew he, was, he had a part in that movie and, and, and we knew there was a, a, a nice little story within the story. And, and Nate went out to Austin or outside of Austin to interview Willie. And, and he came back and he said, this guy's a soundbite machine. So, and I was like, that sounds like a good guy to interview for, for his own doc, you know? Yeah. And Nate, Nate was so impressed with Willie that I was like, okay, this is a good idea. So that was our next doc. And so you interview people in many different ways, your podcast, your documentaries, like how, when you started doing your podcast, how did that eventually bleed into doing these documentaries? Um, I don't know. I, I had a I had a bunch of Paul Newman race cars. I had a book called uh, "Winning: The Racing Life of Paul Newman." I was I I never read books, but at some point it was just sat around for such a long time on my book my nightstand. At some point, I went on a flight to like New York, and I just took the book with me. And I started reading about all these cars and Newman and his history and. And then when I, when I came home, I was like, oh, we have to make a documentary about Paul Newman. And, you know, I think we, making documentaries is probably a lot like being a serial killer, you know what I mean? Once you get started, you don't stop with one body, you know what I mean? You, you don't really get it. You get that, that taste for blood. And you just keep going. And that's kind of, you know, five docs. I don't know. We're probably two or three docs working on back at the shop right now. So it's like, just kind of kept going. And so can you tell us what other docs you're working on or the direction you're going on? Is it still going to be sports? Or are you going to dabble into something else? We are working on a doc about uh, K-Rock, the radio station. Uh, we're working on a doc uh, about, called Meme Gods, about memes. Uh, we're working on a doc about uh, Mad TV and how Mad, uh, sorry, Mad Magazine, how Mad Magazine was created. And so, I'm trying to think of the car docs. I, well, there's always a couple of car ideas out there, but we're, we're now really working on docs that really have nothing to do with the automotive field or world. It has been an awesome night here at the premiere of Uppity, the Willie T. Ribs story. It's a fantastic documentary. Please check it out on Netflix. We hope that you all have enjoyed these interviews. If you'd like to see more like them, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, go to our website, or download the app for free. We'll see you next time.